What's this? A basic boring dialogue box. Well, let's go sort that out then. Nobody wants ugly static text in their game. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to spice up and add some pizzazz to those dialog boxes. Before we start, here are the canvas settings I'm using. Since it's pixel art, I'm using a small resolution, and 16 pixels represents a meter in this project. I've made an anchor for my dialog, but you can start wherever. First we're going to create a panel as a container for our dialog. I'm just going to call it Dialog Container. And then we'll create another panel as a child for the window itself. I'm messing around with anchoring, but this bit is entirely preference. For this video, I've created a 9 slice pixel art background for the text. If you want to use it, it's down in the description. Next we'll create the text itself. I highly suggest using Text Mesh Pro as it's much better than Unity's default text. I'm using a font called Chronotype, which I'll leave a link for. I'll speed up the video as I'm just trying to fit the text neatly inside the box here. I'm adding a canvas group component to our dialog container, so we can show and hide it for now. We'll use animations later on. Now we're going to make a script for our dialog window, which I'll covertly name Dialog Window. Inside our script, we're going to import Text Mesh Pro and store a public reference to our text element, as well as a string to store the message we want to show. We're going to delete that pesky update loop and create two functions, one to show our dialog with the string parameter and one to close it. These functions will be public as they'll be called from an external script. Next we'll add a temporary reference to our canvas group. This will be replaced later when we implement some animations for opening and closing. We'll set its alpha to 1 when we show dialog and 0 when we close it. We'll also default it to 0 so it starts invisible. Let's also store the dialog text when it comes in. We'll hold on to that for now. Don't get scared, but we're going to implement a coroutine. Coroutines are great for running code bound by time or loops without using the update function. Coroutines must always end with a yield, which pauses execution. So here we're going to return null at the end so it stops running. Back at the top of our coroutine, we're going to set our text box to empty. We'll then create a for each to go through each letter of our dialog. And for now, we'll add them one by one. We'll then tell the coroutine to pause execution for 0.1 seconds. I'm using real time in this video, but you can make it wait however, especially if you want to make use of time scale in your game. Finally, in the show function, we'll call our coroutine by using the start coroutine method and passing the name of our coroutine. Then we'll make sure to use stop all coroutines, which is local to the script, in the close function. So our dialog box won't write letters to nobody when it's closed. In my project, I have a script for the book my character finds. So I'm going to place my calls to show and hide the dialog here. This script just works by showing the dialog when the player gets near and closing it when the player is out of range. You can do this however you want. Now we're going to add our new dialog window script to our dialog container. We'll link the text and then link the container to whatever script you want to call the dialog from. In its current state, the text will scroll, but the long words will jump to the next line. That's because they don't know how long they'll be until they're fully written out. To fix this, we'll start by writing out the whole message so the words will be set in their proper place. We'll then add an alpha character to the beginning of the string, which will make any letter that follows invisible. We can then move the alpha character along an index, revealing each letter one by one. And when the loop completes, we'll have the entire message revealed without the words jumping, because they'll always have been written out, just invisible. Putting this into practice, we'll go back to our coroutine and we'll add variables to store the original text, the displayed text, and an index for our alpha character's location. Inside our loop, we'll move the alpha character's position forward and reset the text to the original text, so it erases the previous alpha character. Now we'll use the insert method to place an alpha character at the index using a bit of HTML, which TextMesh Pro allows. We'll store the result in displayed text. Finally, we'll place displayed text into our text element. Just to have neater code, I'm going to store our HTML text in a constant variable at the top. I'm also going to do this with our time, and make a static text speed variable so we can adjust the text speed whenever. I'll set it to 2 so we can use 1 when we want to slow down the text. Next we're going to add some animations. Here's the controller setup I have. It has four states and a boolean called open, but I won't be going into the basics of animation controllers in this video. However, you can use this one for reference. 
I've replaced our canvas group on dialog container with an animator. So we'll replace it in code and use our open variable state to replace the alpha calls. Next we're going to set up some public functions to catch animation events for when our dialog is finished opening and closing. We're going to start our coroutine when the dialog is fully open, as well as stop it when it's fully closed, so we don't see the text disappear as it's closing. Here's a look at the animation I made for the opening. It modifies the scale of the container and is the reason we use the container to house the window. Since we use the scale, we'll get a consistent looking animation regardless of the size of the window. I also set up two animation events and link them to our public opened and closed functions. And that's it, let's see what the Book of Truths has to say now. Oh, I uh, don't think the world's ready to hear that. Let's close that up. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope this helps, and if you have any ideas or suggestions for future tutorials, or just anything that you'd like to know more about, just leave a comment down below. I'll also leave a link to the completed script in the basement.